Hey everybody, uh, so recently I uh, came into possession of a lot of pedals. <laughs> I did this crazy video with Sweetwater to make the biggest pedal board in the world. So here's the board from that shoot, this guy, it was board number six out of 34. And this one was all pitch shifters, and then the rest are my pedals. So let's take a look at the board. So at the beginning of the pedal chain, we have this new gorgeous Chapman Guitars White Dove. Chapman Guitars sent me this very recently. It looks beautiful, it sounds beautiful, and we won't be using it because we're gonna be using a shovel today. <laughs> Just plug straight into the amp. I know I can make music with that, um, but I wanna try with this and have it be all about the pedals today. The ultimate goal today is I want to see if I can create a half hour long performance with just the shovel and pedals and have it be enjoyable and interesting throughout. <laughs> well, let's, we'll see about that. Get this guitar out of here. So we have the shovel. It also needs a battery because there's active pickups on here and there's no battery compartment. So you kind of just, have to... oh geez, there we go. I love that it has a tone knob as well and volume. I currently have a pretty thick string on there because we thought it'd be fun for the largest pedal board shoot to you know, do that whole thing. Falling off here pretty easily. I mean, while we're using pedals, I might as well prop it up with another <laughs> pedal. <laughs> yeah, first thing we're using is, is a one string shovel that was made by my friend Bob Claggett, who's another YouTube creator who makes a lot of awesome stuff, uh, sometimes including shovels that play music. We had the thick string on there. I think for this, I don't want that, so I'm gonna restring this shovel real quick. Let's see. I think I'll go with A. We're gonna be using a lot of um, lower octaves. And I know at A, like a guitar's A, you can bring that down two octaves and it's still, you know, usable. You gotta be careful with this one because it is pretty rusty. That's what the duct tape is for. <laughs> it's already pretty cool. I didn't realize I had this pedal on. Okay, so we'll get, we'll get to that later. Let's do C. That seems standing. Okay, so we got we got a C note. I got a shot glass here. So we got that. I imagine a lot of people watching are already familiar with guitar pedals, but if you're not, uh, guitar pedals go in between the guitar and the amp, or in this case, the shovel and the amp. So <laughs> you have your instrument, pickup, gets the signal, amp amplifies it. And then you have all these things in a row, pedals, stomp boxes, whatever you want to call them, that will alter the sound in some way. Normally you don't have this many. <laughs> like these are distortions, so like, that's pretty common. So we're just chaining a bunch of them in a row. And there's a whole world of guitar pedals out there. As a guitar player, if you buy one pedal, it's kind of a commitment because then pretty soon you're buying one like every few months and next thing you know, you have this like gigantic library of pedals. They're like potato chips, like you can't just have one. Yeah, let's go through the chain. So first we have our shovel playing a nice C note there. We have a tuner, just for ease of use really. I don't think I'll be using that musically, though Though it would be nice to, you know what? It would be really nice to get like a major chord on this. Let's figure out where the octave is. About there, just putting a little. Then the E would be the fourth. Let's see, four, and then the seventh. Right there's a G. Another E, another G. About there. So these are about the notes that I want if I'm gonna build a major chord. Because I think I'm gonna be able to build out notes on here using the next thing in the chain. Starts at the tuner, goes through here, into these, underneath, into these, out, and then into these last ones. The looper pedal, this one is going to be really critical to having a full half hour so that I'm not strumming and I can have two hands on just the pedal board. So like if I hit a note here and then get the looper going, now we just have it in loop. Also, this is just a on off switch that looks like a, you know, an old, what's that called, Jake? Telegraph machine. Telegraph, yeah, telegraph machine, because we did that video with it. And it just has two settings, so the next thing in the chain is just telegraph, and you can have it so that pressing it turns it on, or it turns it off. I'll probably use the off just so that I can, you know, talk through it. Let's see if I can build out a, a chord. So then also with this uh, looper, I can also reverse it. And then put it 
half speed. And I imagine that that'll be pretty useful later. This is already sounding pretty good. <laughs> This one is a 12 string effect. Like a 12 string guitar, you play it just like a regular six, but every string has an octave above string that you play at the same time. So you're always playing two strings at once. This will also give me an octave up. This one is really useful for like, if you play in a lot of different tunings, drops you down one step, two step, three step. So like if you want to down a half step or down a step and so on and so on. It also has an octave and then octave and dry. And what dry means, you'll see that on a lot of these pedals. Dry, dry, you know, dry signal. Dry just means the signal before the pedal does anything to it. Yeah, so it drops pretty cool. Another thing I think, so we built out in here, I still have that. Hey, that's C major going. Something that, that would be hard in this is, is building out chords, but I know if we have a major chord, bring it up seven half steps or five half steps, that can that can really work well, and that's a chord progression I use a lot. So, so using the drop pedal. That's pretty. <laughs> These are pretty similar. You have an octave down, or an octave up. And this one is the same, just so it's a bigger pedal. <laughs> and it already sounds like an organ. And you know, before doing the pipe organ video, I didn't realize why I associated that sound with an organ, but it's because when you press a key on the organ, you hear a lot of different octaves at once. <laughs> this one is the same pedal, but it also has two more octaves than these do, and it has some effects built into it. So that's cool. This is, again, the same, similar to this pitch shifter, but it has like a whammy effect that goes up to it. You can change the speed that it goes up. It's cool. This one adds feedback. So I think this is gonna be really useful in that if I have a note, I can add more uh, given what type of feedback I use. So that's cool. I love it. Yeah. And then this one is just the same as these. Just gives you more octaves. This one splits it into two signals, also has some other stuff to it. So I bet that will be really useful if I get a loop of just one note going. Also it has this. You can press into it for different stuff, so. This one is a bunch of different effects. All right, on delay, flange. <laughs> and then at the end I have delay. These two are different types of distortion, and this is from JHS, this is the Angry Rob. They have a pedal called the Angry Charlie. They just printed me on it. <laughs> and uh, so it's, this one's, that one's the Angry Rob. Thanks to JHS for that. These are just uh, like giving me two different flavors of distortion. And right at the end we have a DI box, and this isn't changing the signal at all, it's just splitting it to the amp so that I can hear it, and then splitting it into the computer. In the computer, in post, I'm gonna add reverb there so that I can have stereo reverb. So this is all a mono signal, just one signal, and then stereo, I can have a left and right. Just for it to sound a little bit bigger, I would like the reverb to be in stereo. So I'm just gonna do the reverb in post. And then the amp is for monitoring, and that's, and that's, that's it. I think I'm gonna build out another chord. Basically, I just need to fill a half hour. It can't be the same chord for a half hour. So I think if I start with that, I could probably get a lot of use out of that using the different pedals. And then I could probably detune this to get a different note or use the drop pedal to detune it to change key at some point. Cause if we're gonna be in the same key for a half hour, it's probably gonna get a bit boring. So I think I want single note, a chord to use, and then something else. All right, so I'm gonna build out a chord, just a C. So I got that in the looper. If I put it at half speed, I can get an octave down. Then we can just start building a chord. I'll add another C to the loop.
string pedal in there. Now you can hear the delay, and that keeps things going. That's really cool. I also love with the delay, if you change the timing while it's playing, you can get a lot of cool sounds like that. Especially if you bring the feedback all the way up. All right, so I have the chord progression going in here. I could write on this for a long time. sounded pretty good. I am really liking this. It just has a real atmosphere to it. Let's see if the distortion pedals work here. Okay. I like it. Yeah, I do too. And then I have that angry Rob. All right. And whatever that is, is nice too. I was just moving things around. I forgot that it moved this pitch. That's cool. That's cool. great. Yeah. Cool. I guess the more of that story is the more pedals you buy, the easier it is to make music. <laughs> <laughs> That's a horrible thing to take away from this. I'm gonna turn off the pedal. So this whole time I've been working with, just with this loop. So something that's gonna be tough is to transition 
to something new because I want to transition to a different key. And if I can get this to something different, then maybe I don't need to detune the shovel. I would like to just keep it at C because I can, while this is going, I can turn the tuner on, which shuts off the signal. So I can, I can play it and get another note. If I play that note here, it can go through the loop and I can slowly turn the other loop off. So that'll be probably my way to transition and I'll have other effects on. And then I can turn off the loop, and then get another one going. <laughs> it's a bit of a weird one. It's like a weird time signature. Right? Yeah, that one isn't, isn't quite as good. Because if I just have a single note... So that would be good. Yeah, that's really nice. Maybe in that case, if I have a note going, like... And I'll put that at half speed, so it's an octave down. So I have that constant note going, and then I can just perform here. That's kind of hard to hit, but maybe if I... There we go. Sharpie coming Sharpie in. Sharpie forever. All right, I know I can get something that sounds pretty, but let's just mess around with pedals for a little bit first before I go to there, because I also think we can get some really nasty sounds out of this. Nice. Have this one, more octaves. Ooh, I can use this one. about this is that at this point it's kind of like a synthesizer if you have like a synthesizer keyboard that has an oscillator in it that's just giving you a sine wave and then all these other things to modify it and just the difference here being that it's guitar pedals and instead of an oscillator giving you a sine wave we have a shovel <laughs> and of course I think the internet would be mad at me if I didn't turn all of them on so if I just turn all of them on in the settings that I have Well, here's what it sounds like with all of them on without playing anything. And it actually sounds kind of nice. I like it. Yeah. Any, any signal, it's not going to be perfectly silent when it's off. So there's going to be a little bit of noise. What distortion does is takes any sound that's there really and brings it way up. So that's why we're hearing all of this. And it's actually kind of pleasant. I think that's because it is noise, but because it's being divided into so many octaves, there's something musical about it. Here's what the shovel sounds like with everything on. <laughs> I think it's mainly the distortion pedals here. Oh, that's nice. So without, without the distortion pedals at the end. What we really learned from the biggest pedal board video is that the last few pedals, because they're the last in the chain, are going to affect the sound the most. Without the distortion pedals, here's what the shovel sounds like. So, whoa. That was cool. <laughs> what if I just hit the shovel? Hey. I think a lot of that extra note is coming from the feedback. So if you give it a signal, it will then add feedback. That's cool. But just straightforward, here's what this shovel sounds without the distortion with everything on. Sticks around for a while, probably because the, the feedback and the delay are really keeping it going. Like, I wonder if I could play a riff just using, I'll have a few of these on. Put in a note to the looper. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so here's just the shovel. That's kind of cool. So you could, with the drop pedal, kind of play a riff. 
All right, I think I'm ready to go. Sweet. So I'm gonna give that half hour a try. If you'd like to check that out here, maybe put that on in the background, and hopefully if I do well, it'll be an enjoyable half hour. Yeah, thanks for watching.